So before we get into some examples applying analytic methods to evaluate limits, uh, there are two important theorems that we need to establish because they're going to be used in, in a lot of the examples that you're going to look at. Uh, so the first has to do with polynomial functions, okay? So P and Q are polynomial functions. Um, and the first part says simply that for, for any real number C, the limit as X approaches C of P of X equals C, sorry, um, equals P of C, And similarly, the limit as x approaches c of q is q of c. Okay. So the first part just says that any polynomial function, we saw this in the last video, any polynomial function can be evaluated by direct substitution. Um, we also know that there's a quotient rule for limits, so if we apply that in this case, we have that the limit as x approaches c of p of x over q of x, so for a rational function, remember anything of the form one polynomial divided by another is called a rational function. So the limit of any rational function is also evaluated by direct substitution as long as q of c is not equal to zero, okay? Now, um, where that comes into play is suppose you're doing something like the, the limit as x approaches one of something like, let's say, x squared minus 3x plus 2 over, over x squared minus 1. Now, of course, you can't apply this first theorem, right? Because although you have a polynomial on the top, you have a polynomial on the bottom, right? If you try to plug in x equal to 1, you get 0, right? The polynomial on the denominator is equal to 0 at 1. So we can't, we can't apply the theorem. Okay, but what we can do is we can factor and we say, oh, well, notice that the top factors as x minus 1 times x minus 2 and the bottom factors as x minus 1 times x plus 1. All right, now, um, the second theorem says something about what happens when you have two functions that agree sort of almost everywhere, except at one point, right? Maybe there are other points where they disagree, but they're outside this interval. So you've got some interval on which these two functions agree at every single point, except maybe this one point, which of course is going to be the point that you're interested in, right? In our case, at one. Um, if this happens, then you can conclude that the limits of these two functions at C are equal. Okay, well, with of course the, the caveat that you need the limits to exist. Right. So if you have two functions that agree everywhere except at one point, they're going to have the same limit at that point. That's what the theorem says. Okay. And that's important because in this case here, a function which agrees with this one at every point except x equals 1 is the one that you obtain by canceling these two factors. All right. So I can cancel those factors and write it like that. Now, as a function, this function is not the same as the one that we started with because the one we started with was undefined at 1 
and the function we ended with is defined at 1. So they're different functions. Um, but there's only one point where they disagree. They disagree at 1. Everywhere else they have exactly the same values and that means from this theorem that the limit of this function is the same as the limit of that function. And using this result here for rational functions, I know that I can evaluate this by just plugging in x equals 1. So I get 1 minus 2 over 1 plus 1. So I get minus 1 half for my limit. All right. We'll, we'll be looking at a few more examples of this type very shortly.